What's up, guys? My name is Dan Danny or Daniel. I draw cards and turn them into 3D prints using Hue Forge, and I also do Hue Forge tutorials for all of you. Today, we are going to do part two of this series, and I'm going to go over how you can use ColourPop. In part one, we did standard mode, and I showed you how to turn this particular image into a Hue Forge using standard mode. In standard mode, we're using the luminance of our picture to create a 3D mesh and to get these really cool looking results. In ColourPop, Hue Forge is now looking at our colored areas and our black and white areas so that we could get just our colored areas colored while we had black and white areas in the background. If you've ever tried to do this in standard, it is almost impossible. So without further ado, let's get into today's video. This video is sponsored by Overture. When it comes to 3D printing, quality matters. That's why Overture is one of the most popular choices for 3D printing filament among creators. Engineered for consistency and precision, Overture filament delivers flawless prints every time. Whether you're printing hue forges, functional prints, or detailed design, Overture's wide range of materials ensure smooth printing and reliable results. They offer everything from PLA to polycarbonate and everything in between. If you're in need of affordable filament for your next 3D printing project, go check out Overture using the link down below in the description. All right, let's get into this. We're gonna do color pop for this image. Now, if you have any questions about the UI, please go check out part one. I went over the UI a lot in that video, and I also have a video for 0.9 specifically over the UI changes that happened. Those have a lot more information. We're gonna kind of speed through this one just a little bit. I'm not gonna go over everything and where everything's at. So up here at the top, we've got mesh mode. We're gonna go over to color pop. Now again, color pop is a way for us to break up the colored areas from the black and white areas. Typically what this mode is used for is if you have like a, a black and white background, and let's say that you have like a red rose in the foreground, you can't accomplish that hue forge with standard mode. And that's why this was added in. So it, it looks at your colored areas and your black and white areas to create two different meshes. You can see here, Whenever we went over to color pop mode, let's go to standard. I want you to pay attention here. We now have this slider next to our color core. This is our separation line. This is where we're gonna separate the colored areas from the black and white areas. And just because we're separating color from black and white doesn't mean that we have to use black and white in the black and white areas. And it doesn't mean that we have to use color in the colored areas. We can use whatever filaments we want once we get that separation down. It's just a way for Hue Forge to look at our image and separate them so that we can get more accurate results. Now for this, the colored areas and the black and white parts of this image are not as pronounced as like the example that I was talking about with like a red rose and a black and white background, but you can still use color pop to get really cool results. So just keep that in mind that you can play around with different modes for your particular projects. So we do have black and white areas directly. So if we see the shadow, the shadow beneath the car is black and white, all of the, the door line, the grayscale smoke in the back, the tires, the wheels, these are all uh, black and white areas. And if we see here, remember I said that it's separating it into two hue forges and then stacking them together. We need to set it up. We need to set up our color core accordingly. Think back to standard where I had said that we need to have our darkest areas to our lightest areas. We're basically putting two standard hue forges on top of each other. So we need two whites and two blacks at the very least, just for simplicity's sake. And then we'll grab this, we'll bring it down below. You can see here in the middle, this is our dividing line between the two hue forges. You can see as I move this up and down, that is the dividing line. You can see it looks a little funky. Let's add some colors to this. Let's just grab, I'm just gonna grab some random filaments just to kind of give us an idea. So the top part is where our colored areas are. This is where it's matching up most of our colored areas. The smoke has a little bit of a blue tint to it. So that's probably why it put it up into our colored area of the hue forge. Now. There is a way, if you're not getting the separation that you think you should, there is a way to adjust tolerances. If we come over here underneath filament library, we have model geometry. Now that we've come into color pop, we have a few more options. We have tolerance and extra gap. Tolerance is how defined um, our color areas are from our black and white areas. So if we scroll on our mouse wheel up and down, you can see that our hue forge starts to change and we start to get a more coherent black and white versus colored area. And this is where I kind of want it anyways. So we're gonna leave that here for a second. Let's go over what extra gap is. So if you see here in the middle, you can see not only the dividing line where we put white up to, but we also have these dotted lines. We have extra gap underneath and right now it's set to two by default. So extra gap is adding um, a couple, in this case, a couple base layers. 
so that we solidify what the color is on the top hue forge. So like if we have a color that is bleeding into our top hue forge, that's what extra gap is for. Because if we don't have any extra gap, then we have some problematic areas so that we get a more saturated color for our base. So just keep that in mind. Typically two layers of extra gap is plenty. Um, so you probably won't have to mess with that. And that's more for if you're not using a black for a base layer. Okay, so now that we have gone over what our tolerance is and what our extra gap is. Let's go back over to filament library. We're going to make this a little bit more coherent. I want to make this a little bit thicker. So we're going to come down to base thickness. I'm going to thicken this up by 1.48. We're going to thicken it by one millimeter. You can see it autoed to 1.52. And then we're going to leave blend depth alone. There's no real reason to mess with blend depth for this particular hue forge. We don't need a lot of room for this since it's so, um, cartoony. Um, there's not a lot of realistic details going on here. So we have the red car. Let's add in a yellow filament and we're going to add that up top and we'll probably come down. Yeah, perfect. So I wanted the orange car and I wanted the orange flame. So maybe we can pick out a higher TD yellow. So let's go and see about using, I have a 10 TD yellow. That might be a little bit too much, but it might be perfect as well. Yeah. It's that deeper red. That looks really good. And now we need to change up our smoke and our dragon. And remember, it's also changing up everything here, it's changing up the body lines and everything. So just keep that in mind. We can come down on this to brighten up that base. And that looks pretty good. So now we have the car and the flames sitting on top of the black and white areas, the smoke and the dragon. Let's say that we wanted the reverse. You can actually invert this, but let's say that for your image at home that you want your colored areas in the background and your black and white areas in the foreground. Totally normal situation. We go back over to model geometry and next to tolerance, we can invert. And now if we come in, you can see that we have the colored areas down below. Let me turn on wireframe. And you can see that the colored areas are now sunken in and the black and white areas are on top. If I undo by doing control Z, you can see that now the colored areas are back on top. So that's what invert, if you want to change black and white areas to the foreground and colored areas to the background, that's how you do it. I'm pretty sure that it defaults color to the foreground and black and white to the background because that's just typically how most color pops are. Uh, you want the color in the foreground. So this is how we can use Hue Forge as an artistic tool for color pop and how we can get different kind of results um, when you're first starting out. If you have more colorful areas, like let's say that I'm using, I need more area for this red and for this yellow, I can obviously bring this down. And now all of my black and white areas are down low. If we come down here, bring this up, let's bring this black down, let's bring this gray down. And then we're giving ourselves more room um, within the color space to blend. So that's what, that's where it's really important, where if you don't have a lot of black and whites, let's say that you just have like black and a high TD white to get your grays. You don't need that much room for the grayscale part of your image, uh, for your Hue Forge rather. And you need a lot more room for your color. That's where this would come in handy. Or maybe it's vice versa. Maybe you have like four different grays that you want to use. Um, you can always come up with it and give yourself more room um, within the, the black and white color space. So that is an, an option for you. That is a customization that you can do. But this is how we can use ColourPop for our Hue Forges. We're still in that artistic mode. There are definitely better images for ColourPop that aren't like this. Um, I described those in the beginning, you know, black and white background, colorful part in the front. Um, you'll, you'll understand that whenever you see it whenever you have one small area of color that you just want, <laughs> you just want that to be colored and you're in standard mode and it's just blending everything, including the background. Like that's when you'll know that you want to use color pop. But th this is a much quicker way than using something as extraneous as like uh, color match. Because right now I've shown you standard in part one and color pop here in part two. And Hue Forge is doing a lot of the legwork when it comes to creating the meshes for you. It's creating those meshes based on the parameters that we're setting. Um, like with luminance and, and with color versus black and white areas, whereas color match is all manual. And I'll show you that in part three where we're manually 
grabbing colors from the image to create the mesh. And then we have to use filaments like we are right now. But yeah, so if this video helped you in any way, shape or form, please like, share and subscribe. Huge shout out to my patrons and my YouTube members. You guys support me through everything and I really appreciate it. If you want exclusive access to my Discord, that is how you get it. If you become a patron or YouTube member at any tier and huge shout out to Overture for sponsoring today's video. I have a 10% off coupon down below and an affiliate link if you wanna go check them out. And right now I'm gonna pop up some videos on the screen for you to go check out if you wanna go check out some more stuff on Hueforge 0.9 or just see how Hueforge works in general. And I hope you learned something.